I'm searching the web for the latest gaming news. Searching GameZillaMedia.com, downloading headlines. Alexander, what about this monster story of yours? Download complete. Activision's coming out and renouncing the first five Call of Duty League teams. Now, I have a couple questions for it's you. God League. That's right. I have a couple questions for you about this more than necessarily the news. But I'm going to give you some bullet points, and then we're going to talk about it. Okay. Okay, so the bullet points are Activision announced that the city of Atlanta, Dallas, New York, Paris, and Toronto will all have teams that compete in the new global Call of Duty World League. Atlanta's team will be owned by Atlanta Esports Ventures, the Dallas team by Envy Gaming, New York team by Sterling VC, uh, Paris team by Con- Contact Gaming, and Toronto team by Overactive Media. The structure of the league and city-based team franchises is akin to the Overwatch League, which Activision Blizzard has experienced solid success over the last year. According to Engadget, the franchise fee for entering a Call of Duty team into the league is $25 million. Chump change. Which puts it in range of the original Overwatch League of $20 million. <laughs> Since then, the Overwatch League has increased uh, to between 30 and $60 million per team slot. Uh, the league will not begin until 2020, and so it is currently unclear as to which Call of Duty title will be used for the sport. Further, further team owners are due to announce later in the year. Um, and just to give you an idea, we are expecting the next Call of Duty announcement, which will be the uh, inf- in, um, Infinity Ward uh, version, because right now we're on the Treyarch version uh, for the developers. It will be happening around June 30th, the announcement of the new Call of Duty game. So, those are the facts. Now, my question is, because I have not been a very big supporter of the Overwatch League. Because it's unwatchable? (laughs) That's one reason. But um, for the people that don't know, either Activision controls owns Call of Duty... Uh, and Activision Blizzard obviously owns Overwatch, so you're in the same family here, so that's why we're seeing some of this similar setup. But are we kind of getting this oversaturation of esports and, like, every single game having to have, like, its own, like, identity of teams? Like, the thing I like about, like, League of Legends is, like, the organization can, like, I liked Cloud9 because it's like, all right, if I like Cloud9 playing League of Legends, I go to their website and I can be like, ooh, Cloud9 plays Rocket League. Ooh, Cloud9 plays CSGO. And I can jump around and have my one organization that I really am a fan of multiple games. Instead, they want to fake this, like, New York team that they're going to have that technically through back doors is actually Cloud9, but they can't be called Cloud9 because they have to have their own identity, which that identity also has to be different in Overwatch. So the New York team there is different, even though when you tie it all back, it ends up in the same place. I just, I don't like it. And and to me, I'm kind of like, okay, first of all, if you're going to have this and you're, and two of your games are both Activision, Activision Blizzard, then the Dallas team and the New York team should just be the same organization. You should give the, you should at least give them the option where the the. And I know this is Dallas, but I'm just gonna give the example of uh, of the Houston Outlaws, which are, you know is for Overwatch. Like you, the, the the Call of Duty team should just be the Houston Outlaws. Like start actually branding these t- franchises and that they're part of multiple of your games i think that's just stronger it's just stronger than me having to figure out like oh well there's the houston outlaws and then the houston in-laws like i, I don't know right <laughs> <In-laws>? <laughs> yeah, yeah right like i'm just obviously that's ridiculous that's stupid but yeah. you get my idea i just don't like that on top of here you are call of duty you're you're just kind of rebuilding your brand off of a couple bad games in a row that really weren't anything special that definitely didn't spawn esports off of them at any high level, and now you're gonna go and try to launch this like brand new league and charge twenty five million dollars per team, five million dollars more per team than Overwatch. 
a game that actually had a ton of hype, and this is for a league that people are buying into right now. There's five teams that bought into this already that we don't even know what game they're going to play when the league launches. Because Call of Duty has to release a new game every year where somehow Overwatch just runs on the same game for multiple years, and League of Legends has been running the same game for years. So, like, I, the, the business model here doesn't make any sense to me either. So what, they're going to start playing Black Ops 3, and then a year later they're going to have to play Modern Warfare 5, and then a year after that they're going to have to play World at War 52, and then a year after that, like, I don't, that, no, I, I'm not, I don't think that's it. Like, you need to, Call of Duty needs to change its business model to being a, a, a service, you know, game as a service, and actually just evolve over time and allow it to build a league and a build a community that that wants something like that just like every other game right now that is literally using that business model am i crazy though this is too it's too much it, it is too much and i agree with you the the whole fake city thing and the, the, it just when real when uh, real okay when traditional sports teams were founded it's, uh, it is a regional thing. You have people show up to the games. It was a system that existed before television for most major sports. So it made sense to have a regional team that that was your team you live close to, so you support. Esports is go, it, it instantly becomes a global thing. Your league launches day one. And you're not limited to people within a specific region being able to go and attend a game or watch it on a traditional TV station or listen to it on a radio station. You launch a, a team and then people in China, people in Germany, people in Canada can all watch at the exact same time and have the same experience. So trying to make these fake regions doesn't make any, these fake local teams doesn't make any sense. You would be better with capitalizing. On brands that already exist. So maybe it is they're trying to control the branding. They don't want Cloud9 to make money off you know their name in their league. They want to control that merchandising. They want to control that name. But I think that hurts the growth of the brand by trying to choke that out. Yeah, and I know that they're trying. They're trying to actually bring these teams to their regions and make and allow them to play, at, have home games, and allow them to actually start doing this. But it's weird, like that you're doing that in season two, and that like, and it, that it took you a whole year to figure it out. And, mm -hmm. and to me, it's like, why not just wait until you had it ready in the first place instead of having a Paris team, you know, that that lived in California and played at the California Arena all season. You know, like to me, and then even if you are playing at home, are you, you're literally going to have a team fly to Paris every week, so every other week or whatever to have a home game for the Paris team. Like that seems crazy. Can I tell you? Like in the football league, the NFL does that what twice a season? Maybe yeah, they, they do. Game. Yeah, they do the European game, and that's and that that's more recent. Can they? I do this all the time, and it's got to be annoying for some some of the people that listen to this podcast. But can I tell you whose model they should steal to make this work? Sure. The WWE. Take it and have it be a like a monthly tour stop. This or the, every other weekend or whatever, they're in a different major city, taking all their teams. They're setting up a venue, selling tickets, and getting people to show up. If they're in, if they're in San Diego one week, and then the next week they're in Seattle, and then the next week they're in Chicago, and the next week they're in New York, guess what you're going to do? People are going to show up to your event. You're going to have hyped up crowds and people are going to have fun, and it's going to grow because that's the model that wrestling does. They travel and and people show up for it. That is actually genius because when you think about it, like league doesn't always do that, but league does it during the championships, right? Mm -hmm. They're, they'll do it in Boston or Toronto or something like that. And so if you did that with your, with your actual just league, it could be Call of Duty, it could be CSGO, it could be the games that I don't care about, but because they came to Detroit or even close by... We'd probably go. I would go, because it's a gaming event that I that right now, I don't get to go to so many of them every year because there really isn't anything around me. So I have to travel out to something crazy in order to, to even experience it. But yeah, if you actually built that, then, then you get to build your... The, the infrastructure, like League, right? They they go into a, 
uh, into a facility, uh, hockey, basketball arena, whatever, and they have all of their own gear, all their own stuff. So their their environment is is their own. They don't they don't have to worry about like well you know is it going to work here? Like they're literally bringing it with them. So. The fact of the matter is that you could build that where, yeah, you're traveling around and you're taking everything with you and, and it's a closed circuit. You don't have to rely on, you know, um, a team playing in New York and a team playing in California and, and, and ping times and all that type of – no, you don't have to worry about that because it's close. It's, it's all done here on your systems local. And so I actually love that idea because, yeah, things could come to town – that I would have never traveled for to go see, and I would buy tickets in a heartbeat. If you told, again, I don't play COD at all, but if you were like, listen, Dead Eye, the COD, you know, this COD's coming in two weeks. They're going to be at whatever arena or venue. Like, I'm going to go. Tickets are 20 bucks. You want to go with me? I'd probably go just to be at a gaming event. And I think there's enough people that like the game and like gaming events that would show out for this stuff because it's only going to come to each city uh, once a year, every other year. Like, you're not going to have a ton of stops along the way. It just it just seems like that model would make so much sense for an eSport to grow from. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I 100% agree. That's actually a really good thought. I'm, I'm a fan. Anybody, anybody listening over there? Overwatch League, Call of Duty League, CS:GO League, Rocket League. Listen to Dead Eye here. He's got a good idea. Just rip off wrestling.